So one of my friends gets a call from one of his good friends from Texas. Apparently he joined the Navy and is going to be stationed in Coronado Island, which is in San Diego, for some kind of training thing. And he called him up and he's like, hey man, I was at a couple of bars here last night. This is going to be my last night there. And I want you to come down and visit and we can hang out. So me and him and another one of our friends, we drive down to San Diego and we meet his friends at like a bowling alley and they're all drinking and stuff and they kind of mingle. And we're only there for probably about half an hour. And then we go out in the parking lot and they all end up taking pictures and half of them leave. But his friend that called him ended up staying and he's like, hey man, there's this really, really cool bar that I went to the night before on Coronado Island. He said it was popping, it's outside, and there's like a tiny little inside bar, but like all of it's outside. And it's a really cool place, it was really packed, and he really wanted to go there again, because I guess like the night before he had a lot of fun. So we drive to Coronado Island, which is probably about another half hour away from where we were. And we get there, and parking is impossible to find. There's cars all over the streets, all the parking places are all taken up, which is really weird, because... When we get to the bars, there's literally nobody in any of the bars. No one. I have no clue where all those cars came from or where all the people are that own those cars. Because there's no one anywhere. We had to walk five blocks just to get to this one bar that he really wanted to get to. And we get there and yeah, he was right. It's really, really, really tiny bar. And the outside was big. But it wasn't gigantic. But compared to the actual bar, it was really, really big. Like, imagine... A really really small bathroom and throw a pool table in the middle of it and a bar and a bartender and that's how much room was inside this bar so we all order our drinks and we get outside and it's a cool cool night and outside there's like this little black railing fence that goes all the way around the bar and then it's outside the railing fence is a curb and then the streets just right there and so we're chilling hanging out having a good time it's the four of us me my two friends and his buddy from Texas, and out of nowhere, this lady comes up to us, and she's extremely, like, blackout drunk. She's, like, 21st birthday drunk, and she's probably in her 50s, pushing 60, maybe. So she comes up to our little circle outside and pulls up a chair and sits down and just randomly starts talking to us, and everything's cool, and then about five minutes later, she finally asks us what our names are. And we all give her fake names for the most part. The only ones I can remember is one of my friends said his name was Parker. And I said my name was Matt Stone, which she had no clue what the hell that was. And as we're telling her our names, she's repeating each one of them. Like she's trying really, really hard to remember. And then she just quits talking. And we start all talking again. And we're all in the middle of a conversation. And 10 minutes into this conversation, she stops it. She's, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold, hold on what are your guys' names again? And then we end up telling her, but this time we switch all of our names. I think the guy who said his name was Parker, he said his name was like Jonathan or James or something. And I said my name was, I think I said James Cameron. And she just didn't even notice that everybody's names changed within the last 10 minutes. And eventually she gets tired of our shenanigans, so she gets up and leaves. And then one of my friends decides he needs another beer, so he gets up and goes in the bar. And then after probably three, four minutes of being in there, he comes out with this really, really big dude. He tells us about how he just retired from the police force and he moved to Coronado Island and he just opened up like a smoke shop where they sell vape and stuff. And he says it's the new thing. He tells us all about vape and cigars and he gives two of my friends a cigar and we're all getting along fine and everything. And then this chick comes back up and just starts like yelling at him. I don't even know what she was saying, but she was really, really, really mad at him. And come to find out, they were married. And he basically just sits there and takes it, and she leaves, and he laughs it off. And he's like, oh, it's just my crazy drunk wife. It doesn't even matter. And then she comes back up again, and she says stuff about how she's going to go home. And he's like, no, you can't go home because I drove you here, and she can't drive, and they live too far away, whatever. And she's like, no, I'm going to go home. So she goes over to the fence, the little gate that surrounds the whole thing, and it's probably only like waist high. It's really not that big of a gate. And she jumps over this gate and just starts walking down the street. So then he gets all upset. And he's probably because he has to leave the bar and go make sure his wife is not going to die out on the streets. So he hops over the fence and he goes right after her. And probably about a minute or two, he shows up again. And he jumps back over the fence and comes over and sits down with us again. 
And we're like, oh, man, is everything okay? Like, what happened to your wife? And he's, oh, she went home. She's going to be fine. Yeah, she, she's all right. And then he's like, I need another beer. And he gets up and leaves and goes back into the bar. And we all look at each other like, what the hell just happened? Five minutes ago, this guy yells at his wife, says that she's too drunk to drive, which she very much was. But then he tells her that home is too far away to walk. And she hops over the fence to walk home. And two minutes later, he comes back and he says that she went home and she's fine. Like, we started taking bets to see if she just ended up in a bush somewhere, passed out, throwing up on herself. And he's just like, oh, I'll come back for you in the morning, honey. And probably just left her there for the rest of the night. And then after her husband left, he just never came back. He just never showed up again. He went to go get another beer, and that was it. He was just gone. So after a while of trying to figure out what happened and laughing about his drunk wife probably being passed out in a bush somewhere, it was time to go, so we left, and it was really, for some reason, it was really hard to find our way back to the car. And at this point in time, I was really tired. I had been up since, I think, 7 o'clock earlier that day, which isn't really that early, but considering it's 2 a.m. now, and I was actually the DD, so it was my time to drive home, and I was not ready for it. Lucky for me, though, when my friends get drunk, they just want to talk nonstop about literally nothing. So for two hours on the ride home, I had two drunk people discussing, I don't even remember, God knows what it was, in the back seat of the car, which really, really helped to stay awake. So there are two morals to this story. Number one. If you and your cigar-selling husband are going to go to Coronado Island, make sure that you don't get too drunk. Like, you can drink and stuff, but don't party to where you can't make it home and you end up in a bush somewhere, and he has to leave you there to come by and pick you up in the morning. Number two, also, if you and your friends are going to go to Coronado Island, and you've been up since seven, make sure that your friends get drunk, but not too drunk to where they don't talk to you the whole ride home to make sure you stay up. All right, guys, that's all I have time for today. If you like this little story, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, if you want to hear me talk about something random, leave a comment. And if you want me to answer a question you have, leave a comment of your question. I'll answer in another FAQ video I have coming up. And I hope you guys have a really good freaking day.